turn it off. I turned it on. on. You wanted the best. You've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Boss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Welcome to the big show, my friends. We certainly appreciate you guys coming by today. <coughs> today, we have an amazing author on the show. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about Lee Harvey Oswald. You may have heard of him. Uh, you know, recently we found out that uh, through QAnon, <laughs> that I guess uh, the government's being run by Jan F. Kennedy and John F. Kennedy's son, which I don't know. John F. Kennedy would be like, what, 110 or I don't know. <laughs> He would be, but uh, that craziness uh, conspiracy aside, uh, we'll be talking about the Oswalds, uh, and uh, this will be really interesting story and historical stuff. And we'll also be talking about the recently released John F. Kennedy files uh, from uh, his assassination and stuff that the government's been keeping under wraps all this time. We're still wondering why, because everyone would like to know the truth, and maybe that would be just better just to let on. So we'll be talking to him in a bit, but in the meantime, you know the drill, the family that loves you but doesn't judge you, the Chris Voss Show, uh, go follow them on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all those crazy places, including LinkedIn, our big LinkedIn newsletter over there as well. Uh, he is the author of the newest book that just came out, November 15th, 2022, The Oswalds, An Untold Account of Marina and lee uh we have paul r gregory on the show with us today he's gonna be talking to us about his amazing insight to his book and uh i think you'll be in uh you, i think you'll be very interested i am i as soon as i saw it i was like i gotta get this guy on the show i gotta find out what's going on with this book and what the details are uh paul gregory is a research fellow at hoover institute at stanford university he holds a phd in economics from harvard He's written on the economy of the Soviet Union and the USSR under Stalin. He is an author of some 40 books, count them, his latest being The Oswalds, The uh, Untold Tale of Marina and Lee. Uh, so welcome to the show, Paul. How are you? I'm doing fine. Looking, for, looking forward to our conversation. So am I. And here we are. Uh, give us your dot com so people can find you on the interwebs or wherever you want people to learn more about you. Well, that's a very good question. Um, I'm paulrgregory.net. That's oh. the homepage of the book. So oh. I would direct uh, your listeners there. paulrgregory.net. There, uh, there you go. So you've written over 40 books. Wow, that's quite extraordinary. Well, um, you might notice I'm not a, a youngster. <laughs> and so if you spread that over a 50, 50 or 60 year career, it's um, somewhat less impressive, but I'm impressed by it. And uh, I think you should be. There. What I did is pretty good. So I'm happy about that. You should be. You should be. It's quite a body of work. I mean, I wrote my first book at 54, 53. So at my pace, I'll have another one out at 106 or 108, one of those two. <laughs> So you're you're doing much better than I am. So what motivates you want to pick up and write this book on uh, the Oswalds? Well, uh, the main motivation is the fact that I'm one of the few left who knew Lee and Marina quite well. You did? Yes. I'm wow. uh, from, from Fort Worth, Texas, mm -hmm. uh, originally. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, I was a student at the University of Oklahoma. And there was an item in the paper, uh, ma ma Marine defector returning to Fort Worth with Russian wife. That mm -hmm. kind of um, alerted me to something. Mm -hmm. My father is Russian, so our family is Russian, one could say. He taught Russian at the public library mm -hmm. uh, as a volunteer. And Lee and Marina came to, back to Fort Worth. They were staying with bro his brother, Robert. Mm -hmm. And Lee decided he needed a certification that he was proficient in Russian. And the one place to go for that uh, in Fort Worth was my father's office. 
wow. in the Continental Life Building. So uh, my father got a call from the employment agency. There's a young guy coming by. It was Lee dressed in a woolen uh, suit, uh, probably bought in Minsk, uh, and the temperature outside was 100. So that was uh -huh. not pleasant for him. And uh, my father had, had him read a passage or two from a book. They had a little conversation, and he 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 did give Lee this certification that he's proficient in Russian, but warned him there aren't, aren't any jobs in Fort Worth in 1962 for Russian speakers. But that was how we got acquainted. When Lee left, he left uh, his brother's phone number. And as a consequence of that, my father and I went over to their house, uh, at least Robert's house, and met Marina. Wow. And so you 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 end up being a close friend of Lee Harvey Oswald. That's a good question, uh, how to characterize it. Friend can mean someone you know. <clears throat> it can also mean someone you know and like. Mm -hmm. I would say I was um, uh, on the someone you know uh -huh. category, but I was uh, in their house on Mercedes Street quite regularly because I want, I was um, speaking Russian and wanted to improve my Russian. Uh -huh. and, and Marina was fresh from the Soviet Union and uh, someone to speak with and learn about uh, 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 what was then uh, contemporary Russian, Russia. So um, I would go over to their house two, three times a week for about a month and a half. And in that period of time, I got to know them pretty well, I would say. So who was Marina? Uh, I, we're, we're all pretty familiar with Lee o Harvey Oswald, at least we think we are. Um, who, who was Marina? I mean, I've never heard much about her. Uh, you know, she, it, Lee kind of always leads the news. Uh, and how old were you at the time? Tell us about that. I, I was 21. Marina was 21. Lee was, I think, 24. Uh, Marina who was uh, quite a Slavic beauty, mm -hmm. um, was a pharmacist in Minsk, uh, which is now Belarus. Belarus. Um, so she was a, a pharmacist. Lee, was who, who defected to uh, the Soviet Union, was placed in a provincial city, namely Minsk. Uh, he met Marina at a dance, and one thing led to another. They married... Uh, after a rather brief courtship uh, and lived in Minsk for a while. And during that period, Lee decided he'd made a mistake and he wanted to go back to the United States. Oh. So she, she married him without knowing that he had plans to leave Russia and go back to the United States. So it took him a while to persuade her that she should come with him. Wow. And, and, how was how was she able to get out of Russia? I mean, well, then it was... one thing you'll you'll learn if you read my book uh, mm -hmm. is that um, Lee was quite inventive. He knew how to manipulate people. Mm. Uh, he knew how to play a role, even though he was dyslexic and could not spell. Wow! And that's that's one reason we tend to underestimate him because he was a very bright. Uh, uh, manipulating guy who knew how to get his way. So basically he persuaded the U S embassy that he had, he had seen the light of day and that he wanted to return to the United States with his wife, Marina. And they had an infant daughter, June at the time. Mm -hmm. a and not only did he get the papers that allowed Marina to leave Russia and those papers were from the Soviet authorities. Lee also got permission for her and the daughter to go with him to the United States and even got a loan from the State Department to pay the way. Wow. So it, it how does, at what point does Lee Harvey Oswald start getting, did he get radicalized? And at what point did he start getting radicalized where uh, whether he be, did he was he just enthralled by Russia and communism was he, you know, anti-American? Uh, what point did this this guy uh, turn on a dime on us? 
my answer will surprise you because the answer is 15 years. At the mm -hmm. age of 15, he discovered Marx mm -hmm. and, and Lenin and Trotsky and uh, the, the various writing, writers in the Marxist, Marxist tradition. Uh, I always found that hard to believe because there's nothing more tedious than trying to read Karl Marx. Yeah. But somehow at the age of 15, he got turned on to this. And uh, I thought when I, when he and I were together, you know, regularly, I thought it was just a pose for him. You know, I'm, I'm radical, I'm different, I'm interesting. Oh. But, but as a consequence of um, reading the details in the Warren Commission report. I learned that uh, he he was pretty serious about his his Marxism that he had written yeah. in in terrible spelled English. He had written some things on Marx and Lenin, etc., which showed me that he was actually taking this quite seriously. So that was his persona. You know, Marxist um, scholar would be how he wanted to be known. There you go. Um, and so I, I imagine, you know, having a Russian wife and embracing Russia in a, in a time of, when was the McCarthy stuff? Was that in the 50s? It was over. It was over. It was over, yeah. Then. The McCarthy mm -hmm. area. But I mean, they, they you know, they, I think the nuclear bomb, uh, they, they'd uh, prosecuted uh, uh, who Oppenheimer. was? Oppenheimer. Yeah. Well, the, no, they, they, the, the spy, Julius uh, Rosen, Rosenberg, I guess. Yeah, the two traitors, yeah, the yeah. husband and wife traitors. Um, so there's still a lot of anti-Russian uh, sentiment and suspicion over Russia going on. I mean, I grew up in the 70s. We were still hiding on our desks from the USSR. Uh, the uh, it, So the company, the, the book is billed that you break your 60-year silence uh, with this story. What, what made you want to wait all this time or what, what made you wait this time? Uh, well... Uh... I'd say one reason was I was I was very busy. Yeah, uh, I was I was um, <laughs> trying to get a PhD from Harvard in economics without having the necessary uh, training uh, mm -hmm. from my undergraduate institution. So I was scrambling to uh, keep my head above water. I also got married at that well, time that after after a year in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's sort of a technical explanation the real explanation was that uh our family which was involved in this thing because my father was with marina for five days uh, immediately following the assassination he translated for her because wow. she couldn't speak, speak english so he saw an awful lot mm -hmm. of history being made uh, but we were uh, very reluctant to let it be known that we had associated with this commie guy. Yeah, uh, that he'd been in our, in our house, that we'd introduced him to the Russians in Dallas, and and so on and so forth. So, and my father was fairly prominent in the oil industry. So, uh, you know, we thought, what in the world would associates and neighbors think of of the Gregorys who were consorting with this guy? So, um, and someone who killed father, the U.S. president. It was yeah, someone who, of course, fairly yeah. Lost. So uh, somehow we managed to stay out of the newspapers. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't. Uh, we of course testified before the Warren Commission. Yeah, you guys saw the Warren Commission, the Secret Service, imagine oh, the yeah. FBI, maybe. Yeah. So the, the Secret Service knocked on my door in Norman, Oklahoma, um, about eight a.m. the day after the assassination. They knocked on my father's door in Fort Worth at three a.m. So uh, they they got to us rather quickly, and one reason for this is that the, Lee and Marina didn't really have that many friends, and um, the report that they used to come and and get me in Oklahoma was that I was a known associate. So there were very few known associates of Oswald. So anyway, uh, that's. Reason number two for waiting so long. Reason number three is we now know a lot more than we knew at the time. You know, uh, I've been able to go through the Warren Commission report. Mm -hmm. uh, Lee Harvey Oswald's KGB file we now have. So we have a lot more information 
uh, mm-hmm. that we used to have. So if you add those three together, they explain why we're talking almost 60 years after the fact. Yeah. And I, and it's an important discussion to have because one of the problems with this is, you know, they, they locked up, you know, a lot of the details about this for, what was it 50 years? I think it was sealed or something. Uh, there was some of it that was released uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and, uh, you know, you went through the Warren Commission, the Secret Service, uh, all this sort of stuff. You, in the book, you uh, debunk the vast array of assassination conspiracy theories. Um, you know, uh, you, you watch this man develop and, and stuff. Um, and so I think that's important. You know, we I, I joked at the beginning of the show about the QAnon stuff, and there was like a bunch of them that were that were down at the grassy knoll area there in Dallas waiting for John F. Kennedy and John F. Kennedy Jr. to reemerge. And, you know, they believe all this crazy stuff about the thing. Um, so I guess you talk at length about debunking a lot of these conspiracy uh, theories. I don't spend that much time on the, on debunking the conspiracy theories. Uh-huh. Most of them should be debunked. Yeah. So the, the reason for this is the minute you, open that door uh there's going to be a horde that starts running through that open door <laughs> i just didn't want to deal with uh, you know how many bullets were fired uh, when were they fired who did the aut- autopsy the grassy no um etc cetera, etc cetera. if if i open that door i would be spending the rest of my life sort of on this subject which doesn't interest me a great deal what interests me is Really, who was this Oswald guy? Why did he do it, and so on? So that that's that that's how I s- structured the book. You know, mm. who is who is this guy? How was his marriage? Uh, did the marriage contribute to what he did? You know, why did he do it? Uh, did he have the tools to do it? Those are the questions that interested me, not not some uh, rather wacky uh, conspiracy theory. Yeah, it's it's it, it sounds like you really break down the man. And how he radicalized himself and the kind of person his behavior and personality was. I mean, it sounds, you know, many dyslexic people are highly intelligent because they have to learn to, they learn to have to learn to adopt and adapt in other ways or learn stuff in other ways or um, not always, but sometimes people can be very manipulative or narcissistic if they, if they have trouble learning things. Um, not saying all dyslexic people are like that, by the way, so don't get your feels hurt. Um, but, uh, you know, people can adapt and adopt to whatever sort of life they, they can. And I think it's interesting that you break it down. What, what was the last time you saw him or talk with him before Kenny's assassination? How many, how many, how much time had passed before then? And did you see, was there a point that you saw that like, this guy's dangerous, he's going to kill somebody? Uh, the answer to the first question is, it was uh, November 22nd, 1962. Kennedy was shot November 22nd, 1963. Mm. And it was uh, Thanksgiving Day in Fort Worth. Uh, Marina called me up at home saying um, they need to get on, get the bus back to Dallas because all their transportation was foot or bus. So will you come get us? And I drove over and picked up Lee, Marina, and June, the, the daughter, little daughter, went to went to our house. Uh, it was a rather tense meeting, and it's sort of a long story. But uh, I had gotten a postcard from Dallas. They'd moved to Dallas, and uh, the postcard was written in rather primitive uh, English with misspellings. And I thought that postcard had been written by Marina, who was who had decided to learn some English. Mm-hmm. And it turned out it was Lee uh, who had written that postcard, and he had he had pawned himself off to Maria as this intellectual uh, Marxist, and he couldn't spell. And and so I wrote a letter back to Marina saying, "I'm happy you're learning English, but you made these mistakes." So when Marina called me up on November 22nd, 62, which was the last time I saw them, she, her first words were, I didn't write the, I didn't write the letter you did, uh, Lee did. So Lee was exposed to her. And I imagine at that point in time, he was dangerous, Mm. but 
here I was a naive 21 year old and wouldn't have picked up on it, but I can imagine there was a great deal of hatred in him for me. Yeah. Did you, uh, could, could you expose him? Wow. You know, he, he sounds like, uh, maybe this guy was on a, would you say this guy was on a path from your experience with him to end up doing something bad? Uh, I mean, there's some people that they're just kind of from the, from the beginning, they're kind of a bad egg and they're on a destiny course. I don't know. That's my opinion. I don't know about him though. I'm asking. Well, I, I would have been the, the, the worst judge of, of something like that. Hmm. Um, I imagine if he were alive today, he'd be a school, a school shooter mm -hmm. you know, because his view of the world was he was a great person. The world did not recognize that he was a great person. Mm -hmm. uh, and they did not recognize he was a great person because society had it in for him and his mother. And the, the mother is a big factor in explaining. Really? Lee Harvey Oswald, she was a, a monster. Wow. So, um, was his father in the picture? No, the father died, I think, when he was shortly after he was born. So he, he grew mm. up with his mother. Well, that explains a lot. That's usually what a lot of school shooters have issues there. Uh, could no be, father in the house. The, the mother was a, a real pest and uh, bothered our family wow. for a long time uh, because she thought. She uh, she had been isolated by the Secret Service from Marina and the kids as a, as a dangerous person. Wow. So the mother thought that we were the ones who were hiding Marina and the kids. And so she kept phoning and uh, pestering us about this. So you're, you're right. Uh, in order to really understand him, you have to understand his mother, whom he hated. He wouldn't allow the mother in the house. Wow. Uh, and I think he hated her because he saw himself in her. And I'm not a psychiatrist, so it's a that's a a novice's uh, belief. Well, we grow up we grow up becoming more like the people that we're surrounded by. So most people become like their parents. In fact, they recreate their relationships from the relationships their parents had to try and resolve them subconsciously. Uh, and, uh, that's really interesting. That insight that you gave to, to, to the, to the mother, um, and, and most school shooters have either an absentee father This has been documented in several books. Uh, in fact, uh, the boy crisis is one of the big ones, but a lot of these boys that are raised in emotionalism and don't have a strong alpha father in the home or around are school shooters. There's it's just these boys are lost in emotionalism and don't have testosterone around. Um, so uh, this is really interesting, man. You, you expose a lot, man. This is a great book on getting to know in depth, everything. Um, the, the uh, is there a point that you feel he becomes a killer? Did he have a real thing for Kennedy? Did he, did you see any of that in inklings in your. With, with, with respect to Kennedy, uh, I heard nothing but good things from wow. them. Um, Marina, re, Marina really admired Jackie. And I know mm. this because uh, when I would go visit them in their duplex uh, in a rather poor part of town, uh, on the coffee table, they had the Time Magazine issue where Kennedy was the man of the year. Oh, wow. And so that gave me occasion to um, to ask Marina and Lee, you know, have you heard of the president? Uh, you know, what do you think if you've heard of him? And Marina was quite fascinated by uh, JFK. Uh, she she had seen pictures of the kids, and she, and she ventured that uh, Jackie must be a very good mother. So I only heard good things about uh, Kennedy from Marina from and Lee seemed to you know shake his head and uh, agree hmm. so there was no evidence of any hostility towards uh, Kennedy in fact when Lee shot Kennedy he 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 would have realized that he was really uh, going to destroy his wife you know who was this admirer hmm. of 
Kennedy. So I imagine he thought that over. It's just a guess. I, I wonder if, uh, you know, it, it makes me think kind of interesting if it, maybe, maybe, you know, Kennedy was a, a good looking man. A lot of women adored him. Uh, I mean, it's, it's infamous. We've had authors on that have talked about what was going on in the white house and the yeah. white house pool, uh, you know, in, in Kennedy's affairs. Um, the, you know, he was a good looking man and he was uh, charismatic and, and, uh, women liked him. Uh, I'm wondering if some of it was a bit of jealousy that his wife liked Kennedy and maybe it was, you know, I'm taking out another man to do the thing or did, do, do you think maybe, I mean, this is all, you know, we're, we're just kind of throwing around theories. Do you think maybe it was part of that built into some sort of political thing or, or, I don't know. It sounds like a really complicated, convoluted situation. No, the, motivation. It'd be speculative on my part and on your part to, yeah. to think that way. So, yeah. um, I, Kennedy, Kennedy happened to be the wrong, wrong place at the wrong time. Wow. Uh, that's, and you know, because Lee had narrowly missed assassinating the leader of the Dallas right wing community, General, um, uh, what's, his, what's his name, General, whatever. Uh, he was uh, a leader of the John Burt, uh, General Walker. He was a leader of the John Burt Society in Dallas and, and much of Dallas's reputation as being super, you know, right, radical came from Walker. And so uh, Oswald, after he had ordered his assassination weapon, uh, staked out the Walker house in Dallas for a couple of weeks and uh, took a shot at him one night, just narrowly missed. Mm -hmm. so, so there's no doubt that uh, Oswald w was a killer. Uh, and people forget that he, he'd come very close to, to killing a prominent uh, political figure. So that, that answers one of the questions. Was he a sort of a born killer? And the answer appears to be yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, relating this to his wife's uh, admiration of Kennedy and Kennedy's charisma, et cetera, that's going further than I, I'm prepared to go. Sure. I thought I'd throw it out as a theory. So keep that in mind, people. Don't, don't sure. create any more conspiracy cults. Uh, we, have, we have enough. We have enough already. I just, when I saw the QAnon people, they're like, John F. Kennedy's coming back. In fact, I've seen some videos where they believe John F. Kennedy's actually running the thing. It's like, do you, have you done the math on how old he would have to be? Like, there's no one that, I mean, I think John was, uh, John F. Kennedy was on, was in his 60s when he was No, gone? I think he was mid 50s. 50s? But I could be wrong. So he, he'd be 100 plus. <laughs> 20 or 10 or something. yeah <laughs> like uh, you know they complain about uh you know presidents that we now have in the last two have been in their 70s that aren't quite with it so uh you know come on so this is really interesting i i i've i've been fascinated by kennedy's uh by kennedy and kennedy's legacy we've had a number of authors on the show have written about his uh all sorts of different aspects of his life even his wife's life um and you know people are just endlessly fascinated by this period of time. And, and I, and I think it's appropriate because, you know, it, it was, it, we were, we were robbed of a president that was, uh, you know, likely loved. Um, I think one of the things that came out of the, the two weeks ago, I think it was the, um, more stuff was exposed or, or put out by the government and uh, Biden from, uh, on what was going on at the time. And I, I think there was an inkling or a hint or a discussion that the FBI knew and was aware of Oswald and the danger of Oswald. And it's possible that Hoover looked the other way because of Hoover's interests on, on you know, he, he wasn't a big fan of the Kennedys, as you know. Um, and that, I think that's pretty much public knowledge. Um, what, what? Any thoughts on that or something? Well, the... the what my father witnessed, and this was in the aftermath of the assassination where he was high, where they were hiding out in the Six Flags Inn mm -hmm. between uh, Dallas and Fort Worth with the Secret Service, Marina, and, and the mother, Marguerite. Um, what, he, what he saw was a very bitter enmity between the Secret Service 
and the FBI. In fact, mm -hmm. the Secret Service would not tell the FBI where where a marina was being wow. held. So the FBI had to come to my father's office and try to dig out of him, you know, where they were holding marina. But this enmity, I think, was due to the fact that the Secret Service, which was very close to the president, you know, they're with him every day, mm -hmm. felt that the um, FBI had, had had dropped the ball on Oswald because at that by that time they knew that he had been in Mexico City and had been in the Soviet embassy, which and this is the the, the, the foundation of virtually all conspiracy theories that trip to Mexico City. But the Secret Service thought that they'd lost their president due to the incompetence of the FBI. And it was, okay. uh, my, my father saw this enmity, you know, firsthand. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I mean, it's, I really wish they quit hiding all this stuff. Like they, they're evidently there's still, still some stuff they won't release. And, and it's like, just release it already. You're causing so many people to come up with stupid conspiracies. But I think this is really interesting. You've broken your silence on it and share it with the world. I think it's, uh, I think it's definitely due and uh, it's always topical with the Kennedys. I mean, we'll probably be talking about the Kennedys and the, the Kennedy administration, you know, until we, we're still talking about Abraham Lincoln. And Lincoln's a, a big part of uh, history books and everything that's written. So, you know, having a president lost in, I think, I think in some in some sort of subconscious mode of us as a country, we kind of go, what would it have been like if we kept that president? We know this country would be very different if uh, if Abraham Lincoln had lived and been able to finish his agenda. Uh, you know, Jim Crow and everything grew out of uh, his assassination and the country flipped back. Um, you know, certainly a lot of dark things happened, especially with Vietnam and other things uh, when Johnson took over. And... Um, uh, you know, I, I think, I think somewhere in the back of our mind, we have questions where we just go, why did this happen? How did it happen? How can we keep it from happening again? Um, you know, we saw a lot of attempted assassinations of Ford in the seventies. I remember, uh, I think just about every president's had Reagan, something. Reagan, not, of course. Someone, someone even took a shot at Carter from, from about a block away though. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I think there's been lots of attempts that go on. I think Obama had the largest amount of threats against him than in any president in probably ever history. Uh, and so, you know, this is one of these things where, you know, we, we don't want to have anything happen to our presidents and their legacy of what they are, at least, uh, I guess, if you're vested as a voter, but you know, there's a, there's, this is, these are the people that we deem to carry the, um, torch for four to eight years of our democracy and and uh we certainly don't want a foreign government of course you know the the, the implication with lee and cuba there was a big cuba thing and you know the russia thing and we're like we don't want you know people from other countries uh influencing or causing our leaders to be assassinated so it's always just interesting anything more you want to tease out of the book before we go no i think the we I mean, we, we could go on for a couple more hours and still not exhaust everything. But I think we've covered, we want people to go buy the book. Yeah, yeah. No, we've we've we, yeah, we, we've covered. Uh, I'd say so, the main the main points. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate your having me on. And uh, I hope others will find this conversation interesting and be motivated to to buy the book, which is the Oswalds, um, and. So I'm just just pleased to get it out. I'd say the one one thing I'd end with is, you were asking me why I wrote this book 60 years after the fact, and it was, I'm at Hoover Institution, which has some very good historians, and um, they said, you know, you've seen some, you've seen a, you've seen history, so it would be a, a, it would really be a black mark if you were not to write this stuff down. So I'd say that was the most persuasive argument right there. There you go. Yeah, I, I think it really helps by shining a light onto this sort of stuff. It can help find all these crazy conspiracies and stuff that go on. Um, you know, I, it's interesting to me how one of the reasons, like people are always like, why are these conspiracies happen? I think the horror of these things and the loss of these things is sometimes just too much emotionally for people to comprehend or maybe intellectually. And so they have to, they have to believe that there's some sort of deeper you know thing to just you know some guy you know charles manson who decides to go be a killer or 
someone like these guys, uh, the Harvey Oswald, to be killer. It's interesting to me what you said about how he would be a school shooter today. And he, I, his, his MO probably fits it. I'm not an FBI MO agent, but um, we've had him on the show. But uh, <laughs> so it sounds like sounds like I, I, I'm not brilliant, but I stayed at a Holiday Inn comment there. But there's a joke for you. Um, so I'm glad you came out and talked about this because to me, it, it gives you a bigger picture of the mother, the his mother the wife the kid the the complication of his life the pressure of you know being found out of fraud that he is by what he's built and it sounds like he really built a house of cards and and put himself under pressure to you know do whatever he ended up doing and it, it, it's crazy you ask you ask yourself uh, as a man you ask yourself what makes a man do certain things that other men don't do um in, in and innately in our bio biology, we are born killers. If I get in a fight with another man, it can escalate to a point of death. So it's always interesting to me what what you know what, what makes a man cross that threshold and how it does it. And of course, in this, it was the most extraordinary, famous event of uh, you know most people remember. My parents do remember when Kennedy died. In fact, um, my mother has like all the newspapers from that day, the day mm -hmm. after, and I think the subsequent days. I should have brought them out for this. But anyway, uh, people show your book and all that good stuff. Give us your dot coms where we want people to find you on the interwebs, Paul. Okay, well, Paul R. Gregory, no spaces, at, uh, excuse me, Paul R. Gregory dot net. There you go. There you go. And uh, I'll be excited to read it. Um, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, you know, it, a, de a more in depth makeup of this man. Uh, who did one of the most horrible things uh, we faced in the 20th century. Uh, so thank you very much for coming on, Paul. We really appreciate it. Thank you, and uh, I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Uh, the order of the book, folks, wherever fine books are sold, The Oswalds, An Untold Story of Marina and Lee by Paul R. Gregory. Order it up and make a great Christmas gift for all your inquiring minds there on uh, the holiday season. And uh, just a great read, especially if you've been following John F. Kennedy for as long as I am. I remember one of my first big books I read was, uh, I think it was A Thousand Days by Slushing. Yeah. Um, and I was so intrigued by Kennedy. I was just a young teen and, and, uh, just his, his life and consuming his mind and life. And of course, the aspect of like, what if, what if he hadn't been killed? What, 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 how would life have been different, especially with Vietnam? Anyway, thanks for tuning in my friends and family. Uh, be sure to go, uh, see us on youtube.com, LinkedIn, all those crazy places on the internet. Uh, be good to each other, stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.